Okay, so Field, I'll let you go first. Yeah. If you're the Chicago Bears and you have the first pick in the 2024 draft, knowing what we know now, who do you take? Yeah, it's Jaden Daniels, and I'm not going to sit here and crush the Caleb Williams selection. I was a strong proponent of Caleb Williams being the number one overall pick in this past year's draft class. We had Jaden Daniels, the second highest rated player on both my board and Mel's. It's not like we felt like there was a significant gap between the two, but Caleb Williams, I thought, was the worthy selection at the time. I think Jaden Daniels has proved enough in his first 10 weeks of being an NFL quarterback 11th coming in about eight hours tonight when they play the Philadelphia Eagles on Amazon Prime, that he deserved to have been the number one overall pick in the 2024 NFL draft. And here are the traits that we all were hoping we would see at the NFL 11, NFL level from Jaden Daniels that we have, and they have been masterful. One, gifted vertical thrower down the field. Terry McLaurin's season and his career has taken off in a way that he had never had happen before because he's been through this carousel of quarterbacks. Great vertical passing down the field. Great rushing ability as well. We have seen less from Jaden Daniels of late as a rusher because of that rib injury that he suffered against the Carolina Panthers, which cost him three quarters of that game, but no full games beyond that. But it least looks to me like the commanders have been more protective of him. And then finally, and this is something that's you know kind of non-quantifiable, if you will, Cool as a cucumber demeanor. That's all the LSU said about him. This guy was completely unfazed by anything. And now it has gone largely well for the, for the Washington Commanders this year. But in a few moments of adversity, we have seen Jaden Daniels keep his calm, keep his poise in that first game after that rib injury. Of course, that masterful Hail Mary play in which he throws the 65 air yard pass that ends up being caught by Noah Brown for a win over Caleb Williams and the Chicago Bears. Enough of a sample size now for me to feel like Jaden would have been worthy of that number one overall pick. You too, Mel? Yeah, I agree. Organizationally, what Washington has now with Adam Peters, GM, obviously you think about Quinnick, head coach, Cliff Kingsbury, what does success do? Success of a quarterback, success of an offense leads to maybe your coordinator getting taken away from you after that one year. So maybe Cliff Kingsbury moves on and becomes a head coach again. We'll see. He's done a heck of a job with Jane Daniels. But Jane Daniels was ready for this. And he was ready because he went back to LSU for that final year. And you see the difference in Jane Daniels with the head up, seeing the field, the, the improvement from junior to senior year at LSU was remarkable, as it was with Joe Burrow. That's why I'm pushing these guys that are like a Jalen Milrow, like a Nussmeyer, like others, back, go back. Go back, mm. play as much college football as you can. That really helped Jaden Daniels. For what we're seeing right now, and I see the energy and the enthusiasm of this football team, that's contagious. Jaden always had that. But when you're successful and you're winning, it's like a bright, sunny day. It's not cloudy, okay? There's, there's clouds over the Bears right now, okay? It's sunshine, beautiful blue sky in Washington because of Jaden, the GM, the head coach, and the structure now, that organizational structure it will lead to continuity, hopefully. Maybe not with Cliff Kingsbury. We'll see how that goes. But somebody gets him and moves him over as a head coach and gets him out of Washington. But I think that has all helped him and everybody buying in him. They see greatness. They see this kid come in. And they were excited because they knew Jaden had what it took. And Jaden, I think, certainly with the coordinator, with the players around him, with the, everything now in place, everything's positive. And when everything's positive, you might have a hiccup, but it's not anything bad it's not any big negative it's nothing to overreact to so for Jaden I'm thrilled for him he right now no question he would go number one in any draft no question yeah. he's the guy he's done it all he's one of the best quarterbacks in the league already which is pretty amazing can he maintain that we'll see but right now like I say everything right now is more than positive it's off the charts Sure, of course. So, so that, but that brings us into a complicated area. So, there's a great tweet that we have here from Michael Adesso, who says, "Assuming Jaden goes one to Chicago and Caleb goes two to Washington, which is the scenario that we're going to have play out here, how would things have played out? Would Caleb right now be the runaway rookie of the year? That's really the question I was getting at. Mel, you just described what we yeah. thought. It's the opposite of what we thought." Right, We thought Caleb Williams was walking into the best situation any number one overall pick had ever walked into because of the weapons and everything else. Instead, it is Washington for a change that looks like it has organizational stability and Kingsbury has coached him like crazy. So what is the answer to Michael's question? Mel, I'll start with you. If Caleb Williams had been drafted where Jaden Daniels is now, would he look a lot more like that? 
Good. You never, that's the great unknown. You just don't know that the, the, everything has to come together. It's like a puzzle and some fit, some don't, you don't know how Caleb would have fit there. You don't know how we don't know that. Okay. You're going to th think it could, you think, Oh yeah, he would have been just doing exactly what Jay did, but you don't know. You just mm -hmm. don't. Now Caleb's from this area. I watched Caleb play high school football. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It would have been like homecoming for him. Who knows what that pressure and then everybody, you know, you're in your area. Sometimes it's better to not be there. Sometimes, you know, Jaden played at Arizona state. Then he played at LSU. Now he's at Washington. I go back to two years ago. Everybody said when, when Bryce young was going to Carolina, that's where the best infrastructure is. It's not with CJ Stroud in Houston. It's with Bryce young. How'd that turn out? C.J. Stroud had Bobby Slowick and had everything going there. And look what he's done. Look what happened with Bryce. Now it's supposed to be Caleb, like say with Chicago, with all the weapons, drafting a receiver. But guess what, guys? Guess what? And I've said this for 40, 50 years since I've been talking about this stuff. You can't beat them if you can't block them. Mm. And blocking them up front is a problem for the Chicago Bears. Now, yeah. yes, Caleb, like all young quarterbacks, holds the ball too long and tries to do a little too much. Check downs and all that accuracy, some throws that say, what the heck, where was that? Where were you throwing that one? But it's, that's the way it is with a lot of young quarterbacks. Okay. Yeah. I heard Brian Callahan say, Hey, Will Levis had a really efficient game this past week. Okay. But he had seven sacks and times he held the ball a little too long. And that's the balancing act between forcing it down the field or just taking a sack. Somebody, well, how many times? Just take the sack, right? Nothing wrong with a punt, okay? But then you say, well, if you do the check down, then you can run for some yards, yards after catch, and maybe get us to a fourth and two, which maybe we can go for. So everybody's got the perfect answer when you're looking from the eye in the sky. But when you're on that field and you're a young quarterback with minimal NFL starts, and you're not going against AOGs anymore, it's tough to process all that that quickly. And then balancing out between, I don't want to turn. What do y'all say now? Which drives me crazy. Don't turn it over. Don't turn it over. Protect the football. That's got to get in the head of these young quarterbacks and say, mm. oh, I can't do, I can't turn the ball over. I can't walk to the sidelines. I'll tell me to go right to the locker room. If I do, it, it, it's, it's that mind boggling of you're, you're putting so much on these guys that don't turn it over mm. at all costs. Then when they don't take the shots, it's like, then they become the check down king. We can't have that. Then they take a sack. Can't have that. So it's really playing quarterback. Because it's easier than it's ever been. In some ways it is, but in a lot of ways it's harder. Why? Because they're not three, four, five years in this league like they used to be. They're right out of college and some earlier than they should have been coming out of college, but they didn't stay their entire time. So it, yeah, yes, it's easier in some cases, in some ways, but in a lot of ways it's harder to play quarterback in the NFL. Hmm. So, Field, let me flip you the other side of that same equation. There's a great tweet here from Anthony Russo, who says, I'm not saying you don't take Jaden at number one, but there's no way he has the same success with Waldron as he's had with Kingsbury, right? So is that Waldron correct? might still yes. be coaching right now. Who knows? <laughs> well, he That's might, might be. say that. He might be. He's a great quarterback can make anybody look good. You know, he they, might they, be, they call yeah. the, these guys don't, these, these guys didn't just figure out football. They got these jobs because they know the game. Okay. Yeah. They all know this game. So field, you go right ahead. But I, I think that's that to say that, you know, that he wouldn't have been successful there. How can you say that? Well, well, that, we, we don't, I'll, these are all hypotheticals, of course, but let's start here. When we start talking about the quarterback infrastructure and surroundings for a rookie, we need to focus a little bit less exclusively on the pass catchers and a little bit more on two perhaps more prominent factors one the offensive line and two person who is coordinating the offense if you look at some of the recent turnarounds amongst quarterbacks a couple of them include i, I would say most notably jared goff and yes amon ross st brown was a first team all pro wide receiver last year but when you look at this team right now it is perhaps the most dominant offensive line in the entire nfl on top of that it is also the best play caller in the NFL right now, or at least on the very, very short list, right? That's what we have in Ben Johnson. So give me the play caller and the offensive line before you tell me about the wide receivers. And one more rule that I want to establish. I heard Mel reference this and he was, and I think you agree with this, Mel. We are retiring the term generational. No more of it because two guys have been generational prospects in the past three drafts. And both of them are not playing anywhere close to it. Trevor Lawrence and Caleb Williams. No more generational talk for me. I don't care if it's a quarterback, a wide receiver, or a punter. I'm retired from saying generational. 
I'm with you on that. I have no problem with that field because I, we hear a franchise quarterback too. He's going to be a franchise quarterback. I did radio this morning. Shador Sanders, we need a franchise quarterback with the Giants. It's going to be, we don't know. Okay. Yeah. We don't know what these guys are going to be. I was sitting here last year saying, should they move fields? Should they take draft Kale? I mean, Justin Fields right now is in Pittsburgh. He went four and two, and the two losses were because of the defense, not because of him. And now Russell's doing a great job so far in Pittsburgh, and they're rolling. They got the Ravens this week. Bottom line is when you talk about coordinating, and you mentioned the Detroit Lions. It's not, uh, hey, Ben Johnson's done a, a great job, but yeah. you talked about it. The players, the players on that football team. Aiden Hutchinson's out, unfortunately, with the injury. He's defense. On offense, this line, the backs, the receivers, the tight end, everything's in place for this team. So it, it, it's not, you call a play, they execute it. Does it work? Because the players do their job. And they play at that level. And in Detroit, they are. And some other organizations, they aren't. And then, that, then if, if he's there, so some of the injuries are, what happens? We, we have to go back. If, if all this would have played out in Chicago like it did, it would have been difficult for a quarterback. What would Jaden have done? Do you lose your confidence? When you're in a situation where you're losing, then confidence, scrutiny, criticism, all those things that you have to deal with when that happens, when it's a cloudy day, right? The clouds roll in. It's a little bit different. You get the raincoat. What happens when it's sunny all the time? Hey, a little mistake, no big deal. So the attitude, the approach of success and winning is a lot different than what happens when you stumble. Caleb's team mm. had some, he had three games where he looked like he was generational. Okay, he did. He looked no, he I, I don't think so. Where he looked like he was going to be phenomenal, and then hey, he phenomenal, fell back. Yes, but generational, no. That's that's where I'm stopping short. Generational talk. Generational looks like what Patrick Mahomes did during his first season as a starter. Caleb looked excellent, but generational, I'm not going to go that far. I just think that we have. You know, and Mel and I were talking about this before the show, and not to sidetrack us, we're going to get to pick number two in just a minute here. The sooner we accept that these players, even at the very top of the food chain, are more of a byproduct of their surroundings and the person that they are, not just the player that you see on the field, but the intangibles. And I'm talking about this mostly through the prism of quarterbacks. The sooner that we accept that, the better off we will be with living with the results. Trevor Lawrence, generational. Well, apparently not in Jacksonville. Caleb Williams, can't miss. Well, for half a season, apparently not in Chicago. And part of it is because while a quarterback influences the roster and the outcome more than any other position on the entire roster, even the very best, go check Patrick Mahomes' numbers right now this season. Is he the best quarterback in the league? Yes. Does he have a chance to go down as the best quarterback to ever play the game? Yes. His numbers right now look like, I'm just talking about the numbers here, look like a league average quarterback. That team is winning, yes, in part because of the offense, but I would argue in larger part because they are playing incredible defense in the best situational football of any team in the NFL. It's a team sport still. Yeah. I'll, I'll just leave it at this, and I'll just put a period at the end of the sentence and we'll move on. I would be careful, though, Field, negating the word generational completely because what you're saying is based on what we've seen so far, he's not. When I was back with John Elway, and I brought it up with Greeny a lot, John Elway didn't look generational as a rookie. Dan Marino did. So we got to be careful here to say, because one guy's not looking as good as we thought. He's a bust. He's not, well, he, we, we should have had this other guy. So while we're doing this exercise, if you'd have done it in 83, you'd have had Marino ahead of Elway. How'd that turn out? Marino was great, but John Elway was better. Five yeah. Super Bowls, one, two at the end of his career. Marino went to one and lost early and never got back. So I think you be careful not to act like we're dismissing this quarterback as a bust, as not. He still could be general. Patrick Mahomes didn't even play as a rookie. He played one game at the end of the season, and that was it. Okay, it was Alex Smith's team. That wasn't his team. And they came in his second year. So, again, the whole force-feeding rookie year, some guys need a little more time. They're all – I say, they're snowflakes. We have nice snow in Maryland yet. We're going to get – you're going to get in Connecticut before us in New York – Every snowflake's not. different, right? Every snowflake's different. Every quarterback situation is different. 